I think our friends were kind of weirded out at first. Um, I think some of our friends were, I think they were like, do you know what you're getting into? My siblings um, repeatedly asked me if I was joining a cult, if I knew what I was doing. Um, they asked me if I was drinking the Kool-Aid, and I said, well, I'm drinking the Kool-Aid a little bit, but it's not what you think it is, you know? But I think now that we've moved and our friends have seen what it actually is and that it's not a commune, um, <laughs> I think that it's like, oh, like we get it now. Uh, but when I finally bought the unit, I was really excited to have my siblings over and my little nephew, because I was like, they're gonna fall in love with this place. I mean, how could you not? And they were like, this is actually really cool. Um, they didn't apologize for accusing me of joining a cult, but I mean, they, they were like, okay, we're not worried about you anymore. Co-housing in America um, started when a couple architects from California uh, visited Denmark and they, they came across the concept there of people living in these kind of small um, villages. The, the term that they had for them, they sort of tried to translate and they came up with co-housing. Um, and um, they brought that to America. Co-housing is a, um, a form of intentional community Usually, everybody has their own unit, and it can be a unit, um, single family house, townhouse, apartment, but everybody has their own function unit, but they also have shared common space. And with the intention that they are going to, you know, interact socially, more so than say a condominium association where just everybody lives in their own units and kind of stays in their own units, and maybe they meet, you know, to make decisions on say landscape, you know, what color the building should be painted. Um, with co-housing, we're involved, we, we're self-managed. We intentionally um, get to know our neighbors and, and, and interact. So we have community meals. We have them twice a week. Other communities um, sometimes have more than that. But that's one of the ideas that there are community meals, um, parties, gatherings, and so forth where people re regularly interact. Uh, this is my daughter, Dana. Um, how old were you? This was, you would have been um, six. six, you were six years old six. when we moved in here. So you had a good chunk of your life was lived yeah, here at Monterey Crossing. Yeah, I practically Housing. grew up here. Um, since my parents were separated from a young age, I had kind of two neighborhoods, but I felt like I was a little bit closer to my neighbors here. Then when I went to another house, then I had a different set of neighbors, sort of, although it was more like I was just with my mom and that family kind of in a house or an apartment. Whereas here, you know, it's kind of like family, so to speak. I was looking for sort of an alternative living situation. I looked at rooms for rent. I looked at, I remember looking at one uh, studio apartment and there were lots of locks on the door and I just remember feeling like I think I would be like really socially isolated and really unhappy here. Even though like it was in a relatively, you know, uh, populated area eventually. And I don't remember the exact time, but I, I found uh, Monterey Co-Housing and it looked really intriguing. And I, I read everything on their website and I thought their mission sounded really cool. And it reminded me of my time in AmeriCorps, you know, like a, an intentional community. When I was in AmeriCorps, we were, we all had a common goal, you know, we were building homes or we were, uh, you know, serving meals or, you know, we were working together and while this doesn't have that same like objective, there is like a, people in co-housing are like committed to living together and, uh, you know, sharing uh, the work and sharing meals and, uh, I don't know, committed to being a community in like a really deliberate way. and. That kind of resonates with me. While there can be a lot of conflict, I think everyone has found a way to coexist with each other um, and, you know, find ways to be neighborly and take care of each other. And um, I think so many people here are just willing to help and jump in. And that's not something that I have found other places. I know um, with uh, like 
you know, even little things like, hey, we've got all this stuff to take to Goodwill. Can anybody help? You know, and a couple people like jump in and say, hey, I'll help tomorrow, no problem. And even recently, um, our daughter, um, her open house night got moved for school, and we didn't. Our all of our like babysitters weren't like canceled, and we were sort of in a pickle. And uh, one of our neighbors actually ended up watching Avadia, and it was just, it was really like. Like, no problem, we can watch her. So, and like, I came home and they were playing with like, connects on the floor and you know, so it's, it's nice. It feels like everybody sort of has each other's backs and um, it, I think too many hands make light work. So, you know, having people around who are willing and happy to help and you know, take that benefit away of that ownership of the community is really awesome. I think it's because um, there was a feeling of alienation from um, neighbors um, that um, people could live in suburban or even ur urban enclaves where um, they would drive into their, their garage, um, close the garage door, live their lives, drive out, and would, they would never get to know the neighbors. And a lot of people who lived here said that they had lived for years, 10, 20 years in a neighborhood, and they, they didn't know the person two doors down. So um, I think um, people miss that. Um, people, I think, miss the feeling of living in something like a, a village, you know, um, which is, I think, what we're trying to replicate here is something like a village.